Hello class, we are now on to the appendicular skeleton. So remember, your axial skeleton included the skull, the bones of the skull, the bones of the vertebral column, and the bones of the rib cage. So the appendicular skeleton are the bones of the limbs, the arms and the legs, and the bones that connect either the arms or the legs to the axial skeleton. And the bones that connect the limbs to the axial skeleton are called the girdles. So ladies, this isn't your typical girdle. Girdles here are the bones that connect the limbs, either the arm arms are the legs to the axial skeleton. So let's get started. We are just going to, um, this video is just going to be going over the pectoral girdle. So the pectoral girdle are the two bones. Pectoral, remember, that means chest. So the pectoral girdle are just the two bones that connect the upper limbs to the axial skeleton and those two bones are let me the clavicle and the scapula so the clavicle and scapula on both sides those are those are the pectoral girdles they are connecting the upper arm to the axial skeleton and if you look at these two bones the clavicle and the scapula, the only bone of the pectoral girdle that has direct contact to the axial skeleton is what? Here's the clavicle and the scapula. Which one has direct contact with the axial skeleton? Only the clavicle, this bone here. The scapula has no direct contact with the axial skeleton. It has indirect contact via its contact with the, the clavicle, but the scapula does, has no direct contact. So now that you've got those, let's just start with our clavicle. Um, and starting with the appendicular skeleton, you pretty much have to know how to tr tell a right right bone from a left bone. All these, except for the the carp the wrist bones, the carpal bones, and the the phalanges, um, those you don't need to tell right from left. But everything else, you're going to have to tell right from left. So in the classroom, we went over how to tell a, a right clavicle from a left clavicle. Make sure you can do that. It's really hard on a 2D video to tell you how to um, do a right from a left. So make sure you, you study with the real bones. 2D is not like 3D. So let's start with the clavicle. First of all, uh, let's see, do I want, uh, um, I'm going to, let's do this, let's get the clavicle here. Now when you look at the clavicle and you pick it up you're going to see one end of the clavicle is blunt and fat and squatty here and the other end is flared out. So you're always going to have, this is called the sternal end. Why is it called the sternal end? Because it is articulating with who? Well, this is the sternum. It's, it's articulating specifically with the clavicular notch. Remember the clavicular notch here of the manubrium? So the sternal end of the clavicle is the actual point of articulation with the axial skeleton. This flared out end is called the acromial end this acromial end is going to be articulating with the scapula and this flared out part of the scapula is actually called the acromion. 
so that would make sense. The other thing that I, we talked about in class is when you look at this clavicle, it's always coming out here and then back in. So as it leaves its um, articulation with the axial skeleton, the angle is going to come out and then back in. So when you try it on yourself, make sure the angle comes out and then back in, smooth side up, the rougher side is down through here. So that's basically all you need to know about the clavicle. The sternal end articulates with the clavicular notch of the manubrium, which is part of the sternum, and the acromial end is the flared out end that is articulating with the acromion of the scapula. So now let's go back to the scapula. Now the scapula, make sure you can tell right from left. I'm not going to go over that here in this video, um, but it's pretty easy to figure out. When you pick up your scapula, always put this, this part that has this, this bony, um, well, this is called the spine of the scapula. This bony part this spine is always on the back side, the posterior side. This side is nice and smooth, so this is going to be the anterior side. So let's look at your master list. Make sure you have your master list with you while you're going over these bones. So what do you need to know about the scapula? Besides being able to tell right from left, do that in class or in the BRC. Figure it out. Let's start. We have the vertebral aka the medial border. So here's the vertebral column. So the vertebral border or the medial border is this border here of the scapula. The vertebral border or the medial border. The axillary or lateral border. This is the axillary or lateral border. Lateral is the, the most lateral axillary because here is your armpit, right? The axilla region right here. So vertebral or medial border, axillary or lateral border. Oops. The angles. You have a superior angle. Here's your superior angle sticking straight up. Inferior angle down here. Um, the, the scapular spine or the spine of the scapula. That is this guy that is sticking out. This, the scapular spine, this guy. The scapular spine. Now the acromion process or the acromion, some people just call it the acromion of the scapula. If you follow the spine, it's going to go out to this process, remember a process is anything that's sticking out of a bone, it's going to go, yeah, it's easier to see over here, it's going to go out to this flared out portion called the acromion or the, uh, of the scapula or the acromion process of the scapula and it is the one that is articulating with the acromial end of your uh, clavicle. So the acromion process or the acromion of the scapula supraspinous fossa. So that word is telling you exactly where it is. Supra, superior to, spinous, the spine, and it's a fossa. Remember, a fossa is a shallow basin. So this is going to be your supra, superior to the spine, supraspinous fossa, supraspinous fossa, then you have an infraspinous fossa, inferior to the spine fossa. So this is inferior to the spine. This is the infraspinous fossa, infraspinous fossa. Now the glenoid fossa or cavity, that is going to be, I'll show you that once I, I isolate the scapula. But the glenoid fossa, it's more of a fossa. Remember, a fossa is a shallow basin than a cavity. 
Some books will call it the glenoid fossa, some will call it the cavity. That is where the humerus, this bone that we're going to be going next, that's where the head of the humerus is articulating with the scapula. But it's a fossa, it looks more like a fossa because it is just a shallow basin. So the glenoid fossa or cavity, coracoid process. So my class, I told you every time you say, say coracoid, the coracoid process, say coracoid. Why? Because you have lots of, well, you got several other coronoid processes and a coronoid fossa. They sound a lot like coracoid. Coracoid has the RA in there. That's going to go with your scapula. It has an A in there too. So the coracoid process is going to be this guy, this guy here, coracoid, this guy here, coracoid process. And the subscapular fossa is going to be on the anterior surface of the scapula. It's this region in here, this region in here. So let's go ahead and isolate the scapula and then just go over all those um, landmarks again. So here you have what border? This is going to be the medial or vertebral border. This is going to be the lateral or the lateral or the axillary border here. The spine of the scapula is this ridge here. The spine of the scapula will extend out to this flattened process. This is the chromium process, or just the chromium of the scapula. Then we have our infra, no, oops, start with the supraspinous fossa. This is supraspinous fossa above the spine. Infraspinous fossa below the spine, infraspinous. The glenoid fossa, the glenoid fossa right here, it's, it's just like a shallow basin. Glenoid fossa, some books will call it a glenoid cavity. That is where the head of the humerus is going to be articulating with the scapula. And what else do we have? The coracoid, the coracoid process, this guy here. And the subscapular fossa on the anterior surface of the scapula. So that's it for the pectoral girdle of the appendicular skeleton. Make sure you remember the pectoral girdle is part of the appendicular skeleton. The pectoral girdle connects the limb, the upper limb, the arms, to the axial skeleton. So that's it. Next video will be on the arms, the, the bones of the arm.